We'll start again on the morning of July 6th, still about a day and a half from the start of Operation Charnwood and the capture of Khan. The weather is uncharacteristically good on this day, so the Germans are not out in force. They're just so badly outnumbered at this point that any day they don't have the clouds up giving them a reasonable chance of escape, if jumped, they are not active, like on this day. So let's go ahead and run through the descriptions. 441 gives us 13 patrols of four aircraft each commencing at 0515 hours and hourly thereafter were completed during the day. They were in the Bay Okeorig area and all were uneventful. Flying Officer Neal left to join 421 Squadron. 442 tells us that bright and much warmer this morning. Flying Officer Caldwell up early, helping out his teleop on the runway, or in other words, monitoring the line in case the aircraft need to scramble. On 30 minute readiness until 11.15 hours when four went on immediate, a river a few miles away is providing freshwater swimming for those who can wrangle transportation. That possibly being the Sule right here that runs between Bayo and St. Croix where this airfield is at. There are a few places along here I suppose that look deep and wide enough to provide that sort of enjoyment. But yeah anyway let me back out on the view and pick up again with Wings Abroad mentioned the destroyed for weeks, Marriott and Young in their issue of June 29th, and I have not been able to locate a copy of that issue. Four took off at 1200 for an hour and 20 minutes, assisting another squadron with a patrol, and another four at 1510. An armed recce for 10 over the front lines, and at 1620 put 14 in the air at one time. No enemy aircraft sighted but shot at an armored car. Last patrol for an hour and 15 minutes from 1910, quiet. The flight commanders and wing photographer visited HMS Rodney and reported a most hospitable time of four hours. Numerous pictures were taken and they brought back several loaves of white bread, a great treat after two weeks of hard biscuits. Now I did manage to find this photo of Squadron Leader McLeod of 443 Squadron and two others in the background leaving the HMS Rodney. It could be on this same day. This could actually be the two flight commanders I mentioned from 442 in the background. But even if this isn't the exact trip, this is at least from the same time frame. And then 443 describes the weather as clear and warm, medium wind, creating difficult dust conditions on the airfield, which have not been experienced for several days due to frequent spells of rain. Effective air crew strength down to 21 today as both Flying Officer Stevens and Flying Officer Horrell have reported sick this afternoon. Complaints of stomach trouble are becoming more common and are beginning to account for pilot unserviceability. Information is that very shortly a supply of rations will be received by RESC, thus bringing the end to the steady can diet. And I guess I was misreading the situation slightly earlier. I had assumed that they were having the stomach troubles due to food in Bayo that they have been visiting frequently, but no, apparently it was from these older canned rations. And the RESC, it notes there, is Royal Army Service Corps, or in other words, the folks in charge of keeping the troops housed and fed. But it's a relatively uneventful day, so let me go ahead and get into the descriptions of the missions here. I have taken the liberty, as I'm sure you'll understand, of instead of plotting down about 15 different patrols, combining a lot of these little four-ship one-hour beach patrols here, and from 0515 through pretty much the end of the night, 2110, described as patrol from Bayo to Kaborg, uneventful. So that's it for 441 for the day, and it looks like they don't fly tomorrow either. So next up, we have an armed recce at 1015 to 1115 from number 443 squadron. Nine aircraft dispatched on armed recce to Bretteville, Argentan, and return. Two METs and small convoy damaged. No enemy aircraft or flak interference, and highways very inactive. No cloud and excellent visibility. It notes that the aircraft landed at B-2 airfield as a preying on our own field made it impossible to land there at the time. And I have B-2 plotted out up here. We've seen this a couple of times before being used for emergency landings. And just down there to the southwest of B-3. And as soon as B-3 opens up, I'm sure these aircraft would have been airborne and made the quick hop on across. Then up next, we have another big set of patrols. This one's from 442, running in sections of four from noon to 2025. And the descriptions are uneventful, notes of the weather, notably very, very good weather. I think just scattered clouds at 14 to 16,000 feet is what they were seeing basically all day. And those were, again, uneventful. But then up next, we have an armed recce from number 443, 1400 to 1515. Nine aircraft dispatched on armed recce to flare Argenton and return via Con. 
Two groups of three vehicles seen, one heading south to Argentan, the other heading west to Lasso, but too close to Con to attempt strafing. No enemy aircraft activity. One aircraft returned early due to a minor unserviceability. And for these vehicles, there is actually uh, practically no overhead imagery in this area for July. The only two photos, in fact, are right here in this area. Now, these are from the 18th, but it does show the overall area where they were operating, and I just wanted to highlight this one real quick. There is more to this one and a lot more to the story on this one once we get to the 18th of July, but we can see a tank right there that has taken fire, pulled back from this little farmhouse, and once it got to the road, it looks like it took some fire and is smoking. We have some more tanks up here. This one weaving its way forward as if it is taking fire, and this is a tank battle right here that we are seeing as part of the breakout to the south on the 18th. More tanks right here. Looks like they advanced some and pulled back, and then we have some more just up here to the north. It looks like this photo reconnaissance aircraft that was on a different mission saw the tank battle going on and took one photo here and then one more just up here to the north. But we will look at more of this once we get to the 18th of July. And then we have 1600 to 1725, another armed recce from number 442 squadron. And this was sort of mixed in to the middle of those patrols they were carrying out all day, but one AFV damaged, flak, intense, accurate light from a forest up here at this location, scattered cloud at 13,000 feet. And have we not seen this? Let me dig through some more imagery. I could have swore. Yeah, we just saw this a couple of days ago. Intense, accurate, light flak coming from that same location. So after this, those patrols would have extended until, I think the last down for the wing is, yeah, 441 at 2110. So with that, I'm going to move on to the 7th, and we're going to see the opening phases of this battle to include a large bombardment right here in Khan. So that's where I'll pick up tomorrow. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.